welcome back. Uh, this is Nortley in my stitchy corner as usual. Um, this is my way overdue um, April whip update as well as a little haul that I got. Um, just got uh, the biggest package in today so I'm very excited to show you that. And I just want to talk a little bit about um, the last I guess, you know, the last month and a half since I did a actual uh, whip update. Um, the last two weeks were pretty hectic for me because uh, at this time of the year, it's the International Hot Dogs Festival in Toronto. And I think it's the largest uh, North American um, non-fiction film festival. So they show a whole lot of documentaries. So this year they had over 200 and um, it's my favorite film festival of all times and I've been going there for the last like four or five years now. So this year I got tickets to watch seven documentaries in 10 days. That's how long the festival runs for uh, while also going to work. So the last week um, I was out of the house every single day except for I think Thursday night. Yeah, from Monday all the way until Saturday, uh, I had a movie each, and then I had two movies uh, before that the previous weekend. Um, so I was pretty exhausted, and I barely got any stitching time last week, which I um, very disappointed about. But uh, you know, by the time I get home from a film, it's like ten o'clock. Uh, all I want to do is just sh shower and go to bed, and like you know, rinse and repeat. But some of the um, documentaries were really amazing. Um, if you have a chance to check any of them out, I would highly recommend it. Um, the best one I saw this year, I would say, is uh, a small documentary called uh, Thank You For Playing. And it's about a father whose uh, son he, uh, was diagnosed with brain cancer and um, how he wanted to create a video game to process all of that and how his family and their other two boys are dealing with all of it and it's um you know i wasn't so sure it was going to be a great documentary and it wasn't um very well attended i mean there were there were a lot of people it wasn't an empty theater but it wasn't packed either uh, but you know surprisingly it was just an amazing documentary uh, it's like one of those where you really stop and think about life and you know all that stuff so if you ever have a chance to check it out it's called thank you for playing and I highly recommend it anyway so enough preamble here um, I'm gonna first show you my whips and Finishes. I have a few new starts and finishes, some smaller projects, and then I'm going to show you my haul. So let's start with um, the finishes. Um, here is one of my um, modern chairs. This is the uh, Bertoa Bert chair. I already stitched this up a while ago. It just um, had to redo the lettering because it was off center a little bit. Uh, finally got that done, um, and Andrew finished it in a hoop for me. And then I powered through and finish the Barcelona chair as well. Um, that was pretty much already three quarters done. I just had to finish up the back stitching and finish up stitching the little um, footstool and then the lettering. Really beautiful. Um, real, you know, the back stitching really does make such a difference in these pieces. There, there are a lot of quarter stitches that allows, you know, that's how you can have a lot of the, um, the diagonal lines going down. Uh, but the back stitching really brings the piece to life. And I think I have six, I've stitched six of these designs now. Um, so far, four of them are completely finished, and two of them need to be finished properly. As you can see here, um, we still need to finish the hoop here. And I need to buy a small one because one of the designs is really small, like three or four inches. So I need to find the, uh, the right size hoop for that as well. So then the other item that I finished. It's for my friend. Um, it says babies suck and there's a little um, pacifier. Um, she just had a baby um, in um, mid-January and um, 
she isn't the kind of traditional mom or cutesy mom who likes like baby samplers and things like that. She's very much into like fun and weird things. Like for instance, she has like a huge collection of Victorian uh, photographs from the Victorian era, like with you know where the people look really creepy. <laughs> Um, so I thought this was going to be you know, a fun uh, stitch for her. Uh, she can put it in her nursery. So that this one was really fun to do. It was, only took a day and I used some of my over dyed floss um, from Stranded by the Sea um, and as well as some silk that I uh, just took from my uh, Chatelaine uh, for a little bit. And then um, my whips. So talking about Chatelaines, um, I did work on my Holland Springtime sampler this month. Um, so if you recall, I did the entire center and um, I finished the uh, top part of the design, which is a sailboat and the tulips on top of it. Um, really fun stitch to do the tulips, um, although you know, the stems were really boring because there's a gazillion shades of green in there. But then the, um, when I was doing the flowers, and it's so beautiful when the flowers finally appear. Um, and then I, I flipped my, because this is the top part. So then I flipped my fabric around so I can do the bottom part. And I uh, took my chart and I, and I you know, um, stitched it from that angle. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you do this is that um, your bottom chart, when you stitch it upside down like, like how I did, all the symbols are upside down as well. I spent so much time looking for, I think there was a particular symbol, let's say, you know, where the arrow was pointing up or something, and I looked forever in my chart before I realized that the arrow actually in my legend should be pointing down. So keep that in mind um, next time you do this. So um, I, I started it and I, I stitched the top, so the bottom part with the windmill in about less than a week or so. Uh, as you notice, I've only done the cross stitching. I haven't done any of the specialty stitches. And the reason I kind of stopped is because of the color. So you see here, um, the windmill, the top color is this really bright, I guess, bluish, greenish blue, more like a sea foamy, sprite green. I don't know how to, peppermint green maybe. Um, and I stopped because um, when I was stitching the tulips on the other side, you might see there are some parts where the green is a little bit off. It doesn't blend in as well with the um, surrounding foliage and stems. And um, as you know, I use the DMC um, suggested colors instead of the NPI silks. And I noticed that this one particular green turned out to be a little bit more minty green instead of the um, you know leaf green that the MPI silk would have given you. So I stitched it anyway in the tulip and now I'm a little bit conflicted because I'm pretty sure if I go through my stash of the MC I could find a green that would blend in a little bit better with the tulip. I hope you guys can see what I'm talking about but it would blend in a little bit better with the tulip so it's not as noticeable that I have a different shade of green in there and like a minty green um, but then it's gonna be a pain to unpick because the back of my tulips I'll show you because I have no shame really it's it's quite a mess I mean there's a lot of ends and I've been weaving things under and I might have to rip the whole thing out which is gonna be a nightmare because then on this linen you know the holes are gonna be pretty noticeable and it's gonna be all ugly so I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I haven't decided yet. And because of that, I've put my entire Chatelaine away for now just because I can't really decide what I'm going to do with that particular shade of green. Which, by the way, is DMC 563. Um, and, it, and I've looked at some pictures of people who've stitched this with the NPI silks. And 563 looks nothing like what the NPI equivalent should have been. So we'll see. Uh, another project that I uh, am failing on <laughs> is the uh, Twisted Band Sampler. So if you remember from last time, I made a mistake with the yellow-green band. It was one stitch off, so I ripped everything out and restitched it. 
<clears throat> and then initially when I ripped it out, I wanted to preserve the silk because I wasn't sure whether I was going to have enough or not. So I painstakingly ripped out, slowly, slowly ripped out like six strands of silk that I was that I used to stitch. And then I realized, and that took me like two nights. And, and, the, and the silk was still in usable condition. It wasn't perfect, but it was okay. And then I realized it's going to take forever. So I looked at my leftover silk and it seemed as if I had enough. So I just took my um, curved scissors, the scissors with a curved point, and just started snipping left and right. And, you know, like every few stitches so that I can just tease them out quickly. And that, even that took me a few nights as well just to get rid of the entire band. And then I restitched it all, and then I moved on to the flower cross stitch band that you see there. And that's when I kind of noticed that why is my progression moving so fast? Because when I look at other people's progressions, um, they don't reach the blues until they've you know gone past the halfway point. And I, I mean, this is this is kind of silly of me, but it took me quite a while to realize that I was using my colors wrong. So if you imagine that each band has two shades, so you have a, uh, the cross stitch band here with the flower, it has a dark red shade and a lighter red shade. And then the next band also has two shades. And if you're using color number one and two in the first band, and then in the second band, you're supposed to use number two and three and then three and four. So you keep on uh, repeating one color in the next band so you have a much more gradual progression of the colors. I was so eager to work with this that I just went band one, color one and two, band two, color three and four, and then four and five, you know, six and six and seven, um, so seven and, you know, and eight and nine. So I've already gone through half of my colors when I should have gone through a quarter of them, I think. So here's a little bit of a dilemma. Um, what I can do is rip it all out, which is nonsense because I'm not going to do that. Uh, but while, but most likely what I'll do is go from red to the uh, blues and then go into purple and then do a reverse um, down from purple to red so it ends you know, starts with red in the corner top here and then it ends with pur uh, red in the bottom as well. So um, I hope that's going to look okay and I hope that I have enough floss, especially purple floss to do so because the middle bands of my twisted band sampler will be mostly purple. So I don't know how that's going to work out. We'll see. But I'm no way, no way that I'm going to rip back. If anything, I'm, I'm much more willing to make it a smaller band like a smaller stitch or something and make it just square and finish it off and like re restart a whole new one because I'm not going to rip this out. You, that, that's just crazy. Uh, but again, really love the Tread Picker silks. It is a dream to work with and I like really like the effect of um, one strand over two stitches on 32 count. You can see um, that the crosses are very noticeable. This is not a full cross but then I find that a very charming effect of, of the uh, distinct crosses next to those specialty bands. So, and then another thing I wanna I wanted to ask people because I'm using my Q snaps for this because I want to make sure the tension is um, right, is straight, it's like perfect, right? And I noticed that my Q snap is leaving white marks on my black fabric, and um, I don't know if I can show you. I'm going to try to fold this a little bit. Because um, what I started doing is um, hold my, do my Q-snap backwards so that um, the, the marks will be left at the back of the fabric because obviously with these over dyed silks I can't wash it afterwards. And um, so let me see if I can, sh if you can see this. So here are some of the white marks. They're almost like little chalk marks or something. Uh, except that they don't come out unless you um, wet them. Like when they were on the front of my fabric, I used a small um, brush and just some water, and I just kind of like dabbed it out and like brush it out that way. But uh, if it's on the back of my project, I don't really care that much. But I was wondering if anyone, like here's a much more 
noticeable fleck here. See that? Um, I was wondering if anyone else, and here's another one. So I was wondering if anyone else is having this problem where um, your Q-snap is leaving white marks on your black fabric. Uh, I've cleaned my Q-snap. It's not dust. Um, you know, I wonder if the plastic itself is actually rubbing off. Um, that would be really a shame because, you know, I love the Q-snap and I don't want to have to do anything special with black fabric if I can help it. Um, but yeah, let me know if you encountered this problem before and, you know, if you did, uh, how did you resolve it? So, some other projects, let me go quick. Um, I did work on my octopus. Um, Leticia asked about my octopus. And after finishing my Chatelaine, I worked on it for about a week and a half, or maybe even two weeks, can't remember now. And so what I've done now is I finished um, the two pages here um, on the second row, um, kind of loosely two pages, because what I'm doing is I'm leaving all the octopus parts, like the tentacles, I'm leaving that blank, because my plan is to stitch all the background as much as I can and then uh, do the octopus tentacles. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll park using that because the background I stitch in hand and it goes a lot faster that way because it's like huge color blocks. Um, so I use a sewing method for that. But then when it comes to the actual octopus part, I will just park it and uh, power through it. So it's not too bad. It's coming along very well. I might pick this up again really soon because it's very nice and soothing uh, stitching and it's been about a year now that this whip has been around so I'm really motivated to finish this one this year. Alright, uh, another small update for uh, the little sheep sampler. Um, I did an extra few bands I guess. There's the sheepy ones with the black sheep, um, some more of the poem and then my favorite these itty bitty red mittens that I uh, changed the color for. Really adorable. So, um, kind of bored with this to be honest. I'm not sure why. I don't like, I'm, I don't seem to like it very much. Uh, may, maybe because it's all those little motifs um, are small and there's so many color changes and I feel like I'm forever threading my needle and, and looking for a next color. And also maybe because um, I'm doing this in most silks, which are, you know, beautiful colors. But once you cut the silk, it, I, I don't think fray is the right word, but, you know, if you can see it, it kind of, um, kind of like, yeah, frizzy, a little bit frizzy, you know, like as, as your hair it gets a little bit frizzy. And I find that the strands are a little bit um, kind of annoying to work with when it's that state. Um, so, and they're very, and they're quite slippery. So when you have like small little motifs, and you can't use the loop method because you need two strands, and uh, this is over dyed, so you don't want to just double it up. Um, it's kind of annoying having to like make sure the tails are nice and secured uh, without it showing through. So taking a little time out. I, th I still think the little poem is adorable and I love the fabric. It's an uh, over dyed even weave but um, it's not on my priority list so that's alright. Alright, so, um, oh another thing. So here we go. Um, I don't know if you guys seen the uh, time lapse that Erin, I can't remember her last name, uh, did for the Toronto skyline and she did one for the Seattle skyline as well and um, I thought it was amazing and she's actually based in um, uh, Mississauga which is a, a suburb you know uh, next to Toronto so um, I immediately bought her uh, pattern which is a silhouette of the Toronto skyline and I really wanted to do it on a um, over um, a, a hand dyed fabric that um, had somewhat of a, um, you know, like setting the sunset kind of feel. And I originally started it on this uh, piece of Zweigart um, 14 count um, Ada called Springfield, which is a nice um, orange uh, with yellows. 
and this is what I got this is how much I had in the beginning and I didn't really like it it was a little bit too too bright and soft and um, you know uh, um, cool AE for my taste so then I went back to my stash and I found another piece of um, Ada 14 can from the silk silk weaver and it's called autumn sunrise so here's the fabric um, the oranges are a little bit more a uh, little bit darker um, not quite as um, poppy I would say and uh, there's some more you know yellows and variegations in it so this is the corner I choose um, like this is gonna be um, um, the fabric I haven't cut I haven't cut it from the big piece yet uh, but this is a corner I choose and um, this is my start on it with uh, two strands of black DMC um, not really sure if I like it though because I don't know there's something about it where it stands out really nice but I kind of feel as well that um, it's a little bit harder to do the back stitching with two strands it, it doesn't like it doesn't look as neat uh, plus, I made a mistake counting somewhere, so I have to rip it all out. And this is my problem. Well, as soon as I encounter a mistake or an issue with a pattern, I just kind of put it down. I, I don't, I don't want to have to spend time on picking or figuring out what to do, or I can't really decide what I want to do with it. So I just, you know, put them away and um, move on to the next project. I know, and eventually I'll pick it up again, I guess. So then I started um, a new project because when I bought my Lowry stand, I got four skeins of the Gentle Art Simply Wool in Schoolhouse Red. And um, I wanted to stitch a um, Frisian sampler that appeared in the Cross Stitch Collection magazine, I think the February 2015 issue. And it's basically an alphabet sampler in the style of uh, Friesland, which is a northern Holland uh, province. And it's by uh, a designer called, um, well, in English you would say Jacob de Graaf, but in Dutch you say Jacob de Graaf. <laughs> anyway, so he is the designer behind Modern Folk Embroidery. And I've admired his patterns for a while now. Um, I haven't purchased anything of, the, of him yet at that time. Um, so, and then when he was featured in the Cross Stitch Collection magazine um, with a beautiful sampler, uh, a red work sampler, I thought, like, wow, I really got to stitch this. And I was a little bit surprised to see that uh, the floss is actually a woolen thread. So I've never stitched with wool before, but. Um, we're the one to try it. So the pattern calls for three skeins of 10 yard, uh, and it's pretty big. It's about 150 by 190 stitches, I think. Um, so I got it, um, and I started stitching on 32 count uh, linen in a cream color. Kind of really wanted white, but I couldn't find any white in my stash that would match um, the count I wanted. So in the end, um, I used the cream color, and it's really nice, and I'll show you my progress. Ta-da! This has been my obsession for the last, like, what, two weeks or so. Um, I, I don't think you, I don't know if you can see it, but the texture of the uh, wool thread instead of a cotton thread, first of all, it's a little bit matter. You don't have that uh, mercerized cotton um, shininess, and it just feels so nice. I mean, you can really feel it on the fabric, and... Um, I just I just love it to death especially you know I can see now why people like stitching alphabet samplers I always thought they looked a little bit boring especially when you have a whole lot of them and they kind of like run on row after row um, but the alphabet it is so addictive to stitch especially if you ever get a chance to try these um, I think they're very Frisian Frisian style alphabet where you have the back stitching around the letter it is so much fun oh my god I mean I'm a, like a little child doing the back stitching around these letters and it's like it's like the the best feeling ever when you finish it 
And all, of course, in the beginning, um, I just used my regular backstitching method, which was wasting so much yarn. Um, so in the end, I kind of switch over to the hull bind stitch, which is basically a running backstitch. Um, even so, um, this is four skeins of floss. Not three skeins as they called for, but four skeins. And as you can see, I haven't even finished half of the sampler. So um, when I when I when I stitched, I think two skeins of floss, and I realized that you know I was nowhere near the end of the sampler. I I messaged um, Jacob on um, Facebook because I um, I'm part of his um, um, his page on Facebook. And he was extremely nice, um, you know, I wanted to double check with him whether he, you know, there was an error in the number of threads, a number of skeins used, and he didn't think so. He, he seemed to think that he did use three skeins for it. Um, but really, there's no way. There's no way that 30 yards of floss will cover this, you know, entire piece from here to here um, of you know, not like 100% stitch, but still densely enough. Um, and to be fair, I did use the English method of stitching here where I complete each cross as I go. Um, initially, I did it so that I would take advantage of the variegation of the hand dye thread, but to be honest, you can't really see um, much variegation in it. It's pretty much a solid red. But also, you know, it's the nature of the mo of the alphabet. It's not as if I can. It's much easier to complete each cross as you go as you stitch the letters. So that might use up a bit more. Like um, I think from a source I read online, um, using the English method would use up 10% uh, more thread versus using the Danish method. But you know that's not the difference between you know four skeins and how many, however many more I need. But anyway, so I message him and I send him a picture of how far I, long I got, and um, he was so nice. Um, he um, offered to send me his extra um, gentle art simply wool thread that he had in this color. Um, if I made a purchase on his store and I bought the floss for it as well, because I, I mentioned to him. You know, if I knew that this was going to take so much floss, I would have much rather bought the floss that you have, that you hand dye, because your his floss is 25 yards a skein. So um, it's pretty much, it's a little bit more expensive compared to the Gentle Art uh, Simply Wool uh, skein, but those are 10 yards only, so, you know, I would have it would have been much cheaper to buy the floss, his hand dye floss, and finish it with that. But anyways, he very generously um, offered to send me um, six more skeins, six more skeins of the uh, Gentle Art floss, which is by my you know estimation here, I think that's really what I need to finish it. So I use four, and that's not it's barely it's not even half. So I think another six will do, and I really hope that will be enough. Um, so I ordered, so obviously I ordered from his site and I ordered a few patterns and his patterns are just amazing. They're so, um, I wouldn't say, I mean, they're, 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 they're very simple because he likes using a one color palette. And I also find now that I really love stitching with the one color. Um, you know, it's not, I don't have to spend waste time looking for a different color and re-thread my needles and all that stuff. So I really like that aspect of it. And, and for each of his patterns, he will mention um, where he got the inspiration from and, and what his thought process was behind it, which is always nice to, um, you know, to read about. Um, plus he hand dyes all his, his own line of woolen threads. Um, so some of them are, um, they use indigo or uh, matter or other kind of plant material. So I thought that was a really, um, really neat and I want to support that. So I got a whole bunch of, um, I got a few patterns. I got some of his red, his Tudor red, and I got, um, a skein of all his different blues because I have an idea of stitching a sampler, 
um, a different sampler in different shades of blue so that will be interesting to see but anyway so that order was only dispatched uh, what yesterday or this today even so hopefully it will be here in a week that's kind of been my experience with the uk mail he's based he's located in the uk by the way um so i can't wait to get more of the floss and finish this because i absolutely love this pattern and i want to stitch it forever so for people who haven't used um woolen thread before um, I have a few tips if you're interested um, first of all um, I took the entire skein and I cut it once and then once again so the entire strand would be 60 yards so if I cut it twice um, each strand was actually no the entire each strand was 18 yards so it was 72 yards for the whole strand but you've cut it twice so it's 18 inches sorry 18 inches for each strand and you stitch with one strand over two on 32 count and i find that the um, coverage of that is perfect there are little uh some places where the thread itself is a little bit thicker and you can kind of see that in the for instance in the letter c here where the um this edge, this part is a little bit thicker. You can kind of notice it, but I think that's kind of charming. Um, there's no need to use Thread Heaven with this um, because that will just make your, because your woolen thread's a little bit fluffy, fluffy. And uh, using Thread Heaven will just kind of like slick that down and you don't need that. You want it to be a little bit fluffy. Um, I use a slightly bigger needle. So normally I will use a size 26 needle for 32 count. In this case, I use a 24 size needle, uh, so just so that the larger eye makes it easier for me to thread the, the wool, um, because the end does get a little bit fuzzier. If you don't like to lick your floss, I don't know what you're gonna do because I don't know if a needle threader is gonna help you very much. Sorry about that, uh, my camera ran out of memory. So um, I was talking about the uh, alphabet sampler that I was stitching in the red wool. And the last thing I wanted to mention about that is um, you have to be a bit careful about um, mistakes. Because when you frog it, um, it does leave a little bit of red fluff on your linen so you have to like tape it off like tape it you know lift it off with a lint roll or something as well as um the uh, wool will kind of like separate because there's two plies that are like um, spun together so it will kind of get a little bit fuzzier and it might even separate at the ends so uh, just try to be careful and um, not have to frog things too much um, if it's a short length of wool that's been like ripped out through the holes a lot of times I might just like discard it um, so I did discard maybe two lengths of 18 inches in total because I did make a big mistake at some point but um, you know not too bad um, again really like stitching with the wool so if you have a chance um, to try it with a smaller pattern maybe maybe an ornament uh, give it a go highly recommend it um, I actually liked it so much that um, with my new project here um, I also stitch with wool so um, my sister recently got a sewing machine and she got into quilting and I said I would make her a biscornu um, she wanted to have something that was more like a, a rem reminiscent of the uh, Delft tiles so she picked this particular pattern here's the first side of the biscornu it's like almost like a snowflakey pattern and what I did is I used a hand dyed um, blue variegated shades of blue uh, merino and silk lace that I actually had from my knitting stash so there's this little cake of yarn um, it's very soft and compared to the red wool from the gentle art it is um, a softer and B it's a little bit springier which is not surprising because knitting yarn is supposed to be a little bit bouncy um, so when stitching with this particular one I had to be careful that I wasn't pulling it too tight 
um, as well as that, um, you know, any sort of mistakes um, while the leftover blue lint is not as visible as the red lint um, and pr practically mean that the, the floss, the yarn, you can throw away because it, it does weaken significantly. Um, but I have so much of it, so I'm not really worried about that. So um, I just started the second side, which, uh, let me see if I can, which you can see here. Um, so that's the center of um, the other snowflake, I guess. As you can see, it's going to be pretty huge. I mean, this thing alone is about five inches across, and I still need to stitch the square border around it so I can uh, make up this, this go new later. Uh, but she did want a larger one. So I'm going to try and see how that goes. Uh, we're also going to fill it with the walnut, ground walnut shells, um, which obviously are brown, is brown, so I don't know how that's going to look, um, if it's going to be see-through through the white um, even weave. Uh, by the way, this is a uh, 28 count uh, even weave, uh, really nice to work with. Um, lovely fabric. So yeah, so I love it so much, and I wish you guys could feel it, because you can really fa feel the raised stitches of the woolen thread um, and I, I'm kind of really enjoying working with one strand because uh, then you don't have to worry about matching up uh, two strands of like over dye colors um, and it's just kind of really nice to get that kind of like rustic coverage uh, with one strand and not like the full coverage obviously I don't have um, so much problems with trying to get my needle through an already stitched area because it's only you know little there's, there isn't a lot of uh, strands of floss covering those holes anymore. So yeah, I'm really liking this. Uh, one more quick finish um, that I'm a little bit disappointed in. Um, this was one of my um, travel projects and I finished it really quickly and um, I decided to leave off the um, Toronto letter. Um, it's pretty obvious to people who live here, I guess, I hope anyways, that this is Toronto with a CN Tower. But then I watched it and I'm very disappointed because my uh, maple leaves, they bled. And I'm so surprised because this is DMC and I didn't expect DMC to be, you know, to be not color fast. So at this point, I think it's a little bit late to do anything about it. I don't know if I could wash it again, but I think it's kind of the dye has been set. So I don't really know what to do with this little thing. Um, I was planning to give it to my younger brother, and uh, now I can't really do it because, you know, the maple leaf bled all over it. So that kind of sucks. And I even used um, Krennic uh, Glow in the Dark thread um, to stitch the window. So I was really excited about that. It worked really well, and I'm kind of pretty sad that I can't give this as a gift as I wanted to. Alright, so that comes to the end of my updates, and uh, let's show you my haul. Um, so, uh, I placed an Amazon order for some household stuff, and then I got some clickable Sharpie highlighters. Uh, I like the clickable ones because then um, I don't have to worry about uh, the cap. So, tons of those to play with, yay! And then um, I got a big order from Stitch and Frog. So a few weeks ago, I got the idea to stitch something for a coworker. Um, she's a huge animal lover, um, and uh, she has two greyhounds and three cats. And uh, she's involved with a uh, local monkey sanctuary. Uh, for those of you who may remember. Remember like two summers ago or a while ago, there was a Ikea monkey who showed up at an Ikea. He was dressed in like a little fur jacket and all that. Um, and that was actually in Toronto. And it was a huge deal because the lady who kept him as a pet, um, she actually wasn't allowed to keep him as a pet. Um, pet monkeys are illegal in Toronto, although they are legal in like other cities um, and towns in Ontario. So um, the monkey was taken away from her and they gave it to the custody of um, um, this monkey sanctuary which uh, my, my co-worker is involved in. So um, I thought that you know I will stitch her something uh, something small because uh, she's one of those people who always do you know they one of those people who always do everything for other people and who are so nice and uh, selfless and um, so I wanted to do something nice for her instead. 
So I wanted to do the um, dog lessons for people from Lizzie Kate. Um, and then I also got the cat lessons from for people uh, because I got cats and she got cats too. I'm not really sure I'm gonna stitch two of them for her. I think that's a little bit too much, but uh, I'll definitely do the dog one for her and then I'm gonna stitch the cat one for myself. Um, so I got um, the threads, the over dyed colors to go with it. So here are the ones for the cat. So let me see. There's uh, two skeins of caterpillar, which is a, a medium dark brown. Uh, one skein of, actually two skeins of Swiss chocolate, which is a nice milk brown. Uh, pumpkin, nice orange. Um, moss, which has a nice variegation to the green as well as really tealy. So some of these are weak dye works and some of them are classic color works. Um, so this is for the cat version. Um, I think there's one green in here in the white that I didn't bother getting the uh, over dyed for because I'm pretty sure I have uh, very similar uh, DMC and white. I don't see the point of getting over dyed white thread. Um, but I really wanted to get the rest of them because I've never used weak dye works or classic color works. So, uh, crescent colors, actually there's classic color works as well as crescent colors. So there's three different types of, um, um, threads here. So I'm really looking forward to, um, stitching with those. So this is one. I like, when I get my threads, I like to keep them with the project, with the chart, otherwise um, I'm going to forget which one is which. And then for the dog one, um, kind of similar, two shades of cocoa bean, which is a brown, um, two skeins of uh, Deep Sea by uh, Weak Dye Works, one skein of Liberty, which is a nice bright red, and one skein of Blue to to Topaz. And then a skein of molasses, which is like a brownie shade. Um, there should also be a skein of green um, called grasshopper, but I didn't bother getting that one because, again, yeah, uh, I can use the DMC color for that. So, yeah, I'm really excited to stitch these. It's probably going to be the dog lessons for people. It's gonna, probably going to be my next uh, uh, start. Let's see. Oh, and then I also got the red riding hood from Primitive Hair. I've admired this ever since um, Mrs. Milky Bar showed it in her, in her video. Um, I think the colors are beautiful, um, very simplistic. Um, and Red Riding Hood's one of my favorite stories, I would say. And the letters and just everything is beautiful. So I got all the threads that go with it. Um, the Buckeye Scarlet, uh, two skeins of, what color is it, Pecan Pie, and then I didn't want to use uh, DMC 310 because the coverage of uh, 310 is not so good, so I actually splurged on two skeins of um, black lic licorice from um, the uh, Simply Shaker threads as well, um, and then I'll just use regular white for the white. Um, I was really contemplating buying the special Salem uh, linen, old Salem linen, which is um, hand dyed by the designer, Primitive Hair herself, um, to be have that really stained old old vintage look. Um, but you know, she's located in Italy, and I bought this pattern through Stitch and Frog, and they didn't have the linen. Um, I didn't. I I kind of looked at. The cost of buying uh, a, almost a fat quarter of um, linen from her and the shipping. The shipping came up to close to ten dollars alone, and then in the end, I I didn't go for it. Um, instead, I found some um, fabric for sale on one of the D Stash Facebook the Facebook groups. So I bought a bunch of linen there instead. So I'm gonna probably I'm gonna use some of that, but really also excited to stitch this one. Okay, I'm trying to organize myself here. Um, another one that I got was, let's see, oh yeah, 
So I got a Halloween chart from the dra drawn thread called When Skeletons Dance. And I'm going to see if I can open it up. I'll take it out of the plastic so you can see it. Um, here you go. Really nice. Um, I like the little poem that goes with it. When skeletons dance and ghosts make merry. When pumpkins are carved. When black cats are scary, when witches go riding, when goblins are seen, the moon laughs and whispers, this near Halloween. I know. Um, I didn't want to, so it also uses um, gentle art hand dyed flosses or thread works hand dyed floss. And I didn't want to buy all of them. So I got the most um, noticeable ones, which are um, this yellowy one called, uh, from the thread works called um caramel caramel candy for the moon there you go and then i got the green one which is called spanish olives for i think it's mostly used for the house over there and then i got the um dark gray one called wrought iron which is used for the um, i think the letters as well as the actual um tree so i also got a skein of um reflections which is supposed to be the white whitish color for the skeleton and for parts of the house but i think they forgot to put that in my order so i'm gonna hunt around to make sure it didn't fall out of the envelope somewhere uh, but i might have to email them and ask uh, where it went so really my goal with this order was to um, order a bunch of different types of over dyed cotton threads so um, I got the Gentle Art, I got the Weak Dye Works, the Crescent Colors, and now I got the Thread Works as well. Okay, so then um, I also got some different colors to go for different uh, patterns that I already have in my stash. So this is the Heartstring Samplery called Baby It's Cold Outside, really cozy red house with snow swirling around, and these are the threads I got for it. Yeah, really like that. Um, and then let me see. Um, I also got two skeins of the blue and the red uh, from Crescent Colors for this little house needlework um, bluebird, little bluebird. Um, and here are the colors. So really nice uh, small project to um, stitch. And then I got some patterns from the from Stitch and Frog as well. Um, they have a really nice 40% off section, and I got most of my charts from there. And I would definitely encourage you checking it out. Um, they have hundreds, maybe even thousand items that are 40% off or 20% off. Um, and I had a lot of fun browsing and figuring out which charts I like. And a lot of the charts are only one, one only, right? So if you buy the one chart at forty percent off, um, someone, you know, the the um, it's no longer available. Um, it did take about a week for my order to be shipped, um, which was okay because um, for each item that you add to your cart, it will tell you in the description of the item how many, um, how soon it will ship out. So for most of them are one or two days, but some of them will take five to seven days. And I think I had some that uh, were of that category. And Marty, the owner, because um, I messaged, I emailed her, I think, I think it's a her. Um, before I place my order because the shipping seemed pretty high to me. It came up to about $25 for shipping and I I wasn't sure whether that was an accurate quote or not. So I talked to her and she said that um, if the shipping turns out to be lower, um, she will refund me the difference, which she did and shipping turned out to be about half of that. So I'm really glad I, I, I checked with her because um, $25 for shipping just sounds a little bit uh, excessive to me for you know, even I did order like a dozen charts and like a whole bunch of um, floss, but even then it shouldn't cost $25 to ship that, I think. So uh, one of the uh, charts I got is um, from Needle Art by Brenda Gervais, Sampler of the Season, Summer. Uh, I really love these samplers, especially this one with the beehives and uh, the sunflowers. And I think as a whole, I see a lot on floss tube or, you know, even on Facebook, a lot of us love bees. So uh, we all have that in common. And then there is one from Not Forgotten Farm. It's called A Plump Wife. 
I don't know if you can see it properly, but I love this little one because of the saying. I don't really like the um, the way that the, the farmer's wife is depicted. She looks a little bit orange, but it says, A plump wife is a gift to the farmer. His garden is cared for. His nights are much warmer. I think that's adorable. And then I got another one from Not Forgotten Farm. Um, called Christmas cat and it says not a creature was staring except for the cat so it's an orange cat and I have an orange cat so um, I can't wait to stitch this one up with a Christmas tree not that we have a tree because you know God sakes with cats we can't have trees but I'm, I'll make ornaments for other people's trees or maybe I'll just keep it and hang it around or maybe I'll stuff it with catnip and then the cats can play with it um, here's one from Rosewood Manor. It is called Two Bs and ABCs. And what I like about this particular pattern is those leaves and the flower. It's almost Art Deco. I thought that was amazing. And I think it has some, no, it doesn't have specialty stitches, so that's fine. Um, and then Ink Circles. I'm just collecting more and more of their patterns because they're so amazing. This is the, uh, the Birds and the Bees as well. And, um, what I really like about this pattern is the Celtic kind of border, the interlocking border. Love it. And then I got their newest, uh, one of the new patterns that was um, released at the Nashville market. It's called Get Kraken. It's a reproduction of an antique Dutch sampler um, that commemorates the memorable battle of 1694 in which so many lives were lost. And it has a Dutch saying on it. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, but Dutch is my first language. And I have this, um, you know, weird love for all things Dutch, even though technically I'm not Dutch. I've lived in Holland for a few years, but I'm not technically, you know, Dutch of the Dutch culture, I guess. I mean, I'd be much more Chinese culture, but, you know, I still have all this weird love for Dutch things. Um, so there's a Dutch saying that says, um, and if you translate it into English, it will say, and thus began the epic battle, and no man escaped his watery grave, but in Dutch. Um, so I, I love it, and I love octopi and kraken, and as you can tell from my other whip. So I'm very happy um, to uh, have this chart. And here's another one that I missed out on the stash unload or one of the you know the many Facebook groups twice I missed out on it twice already and I loved it and when I saw it for uh, on sale at the Stitch and Frog site I snapped it up so fast it's the Cricut collection um, what is it called skeleton crew so it has a ship and you see the skeletons and there's like a sea dragon or monster in it but it's a skeleton as well um yeah i think it's adorable yeah for um you know maybe a little kid's room or something we'll see and uh that's all the charts i have i got some fabric again from a stash unload group oh wait there's one more chart that i got from a stash unload group which is elizabeth's design green old garden it has a bunch of specialty stitches i really do like her designs not all of them but the garden ones i think i went through my um, box earlier and i have a few of her um which is kind of similar to these and it came with the piece of linen that fits it exactly so this is gonna go together i'm gonna have to find a ziploc bag for it and put it away um oh yeah so from the fabric i got i got this stack of fabric actually no not this one this stack of fabric um from a t stash group on uh, facebook i think she does the stash quite often. Um, I'm fairly envious of her fabric stash. She must have quite a stash. Uh, but this time I wanted to get some of the um, uh, neutral colors that I can use for stitching samplers and things like that. So uh, this is one huge piece. It's a fat half of um, hand dyed fabrics, 35 count. And the color is called Hay Wayne's. You can't really tell um, from here, but it's like a light, very buttery yellow, kind of like the uh, color you get when you have a cream or white linen and you leave it out for a long time and it gets um, that old um, yellowy thing. So 
you know what my mom would say I can't believe that people are paying money for these things because it looks old and you know why would people pay money for things that purposely look old it's a very Chinese thing I think um, so another one is also hand dye fabric 40 count um, uh, half a yard of creme brulee it's kind of similar to the other one but just a little bit more yellower um, I'm very excited to use this because I've never stitched on 40 count before so that's gonna be interesting and then um, another fat half so half a yard of hand dye fibers mushroom so this one is a little bit more um, not yellow but um, like a creamy brownie taupey light very light taupey tone um, and then these are the nice special ones um, there's 36 count colorscapes oh picture this plus um, a fat quarter of relic uh, which I hope you can see but it's a beautiful like old parchment paper with um, you can see the different um, swirls in it the over dye so this is, I have no idea what I'm going to use this for. I might actually use this one for um, the uh, primitive hair, the red riding hood, because uh, it kind of has that like old vintage look. And then uh, there is um, a fat quarter of creme brulee by R&R. I can't remember what count it is. I think it's either 36 or 40. I'm not really sure. Let me see if I can see it. It might be 40. It's really fine. Um, and it's a, it's stiffer than the other fabrics, but it's also really thin. I'm a little bit concerned that with the light shining on it, you might not see it well. But um, it has these almost veiny looking. Um, I don't know if you can see it like this. So if you almost like this part here, like a veiny looking, like almost like a rock marble formation here, with the its shading is just a bit darker. And I love that. I have no idea what I'm going to do for this. It's definitely going to be used for something like a sampler. Um, I might actually not use it because I have this issue where if I only have one of a particular item and I feel that if I use it, it will be forever gone and I will never be able to get it back again, I will probably just treasure that piece forever, which is what I do with a lot of my yarn, which is, I know, pathetic um, because, you know, when you buy things, you should use them. Anyways, so uh, that's my uh, whip update and my haul and all that and I can never seem to shoot short videos so I apologize for that and thank you for watching through the end. Uh, before I stop though, I want to say something quickly about Stitch Mania. There's no way you could have escaped uh, Stitch Mania news on uh, YouTube or Flosstube. Um, and you know what, it sounds so much fun. I was seriously contemplating joining. I even um, made a list of all the whips I have and the projects I want to start and I'm already at 16. Like I already have 10 whips without even trying and um, there's so many that I want to start and most of them are kind of smallish so but I, I was at 16 I was like I can totally do this but um, in the end I decided that you know um, I don't want to play by rules even if um, as a coffee stitcher and stitch in time have explained you know you can make it any you can make the rules as you want because um, as long as it's a mania for you it doesn't have to be like the start to 15 on the first 15 days or whatever it is that other people are doing as long as it feels a mania to you well uh, for me I I like to stitch on whatever I feel like um, and if I want to start something new and if I want to stitch on that new thing for the next three days uh, then I'll do it um, so I'll be there with you guys in spirit um, I feel a bit crazy now with all the different whips I have and I'm kind of conveniently forgetting all the older whips that have been sitting around in my drawer for a while so we won't talk about that um, and it's like so exciting. I have all this new stash and all the over dye flosses I want and all. Um, I'm really getting into the samplers. I um, have a lot of sampler patterns that I haven't stitched yet. So I really want to stitch those um, because if I don't stitch it, it probably means that I'm going to spend more time lusting over it and, and looking at um, shops and like these stash groups and try to buy more charts so it's probably better if I just stitch it and, and get it out of my system so that's basically how I rationalize all of this so 
Uh, best of luck to everyone who is uh, participating in the Statue Mania Challenge um, as well as everyone who is doing all the numerous um, stitch alongs I've seen from uh, Chris Cross Stitch and Discuss Number 2 or uh, Cross Stitch is Fun Group or all the uh, designer led stitch along. I really enjoy watching all your various uh, progresses and um, and thank you guys so much for making continuing to make videos um you know i'm very lucky to have found such a great community so yeah thanks again for watching my entire long video um if you have any questions about a particular chart or whatever just let me know in the comments and i'll talk to you guys next time bye